This is the Mannequin's Three Sisters filter by Whimsical Wraps, and I have a confession to make. I greatly underestimated just how cool and how powerful this filter was. I thought it was just another triple bandpass filter for doing formats, and that alone's pretty cool. You can make some pretty cool sounds this way. I mean, that alone sounds good, but it can do so much more. What it really is, is three filter chains, each with their own inputs and outputs, as well as an all input that goes to all three filter chains at once, and an all output that mixes them all together for you. Each filter chain contains a pair of two-pole, state-variable, multi-mode filters. How those filters are configured is affected by this crossover format switch on the front panel, the counterclockwise rotation of what is normally the resonance or equality knob, and also, of course, the frequency cutoff, and this span control. Right now I have the switch set to format mode, and I have the resonance control set to clockwise from 12 o'clock. That means it acts as a normal resonance. And in this mode, it's three independent bandpass filters. I have a sawtooth wave from the Mother 32 coming into the all input, so it's going to all three filter chains at once. And as I play a note, you can see on that graph, resin peaks from the three different bandpass filter chains. You can also listen to them independently. Let's go ahead and drone my keyboard here. I'm going to take my all output and listen to the low output, just the lower of the three chains. Nice low sound there. Let me go ahead and retrigger a note if you want. One bandpass filter. The center, which is the middle of the three bandpasses. And the high, the highest of the three bandpass filters. And you hear the very vocal like quality there. And then mix all together. The center frequency of those are controlled by this central cutoff knob. And again, you see the three humps on the frequency analyzer display. And then the span control decides how far they are separated from each other. The center one stays in the same place. This moves the lower one lower and the higher one higher. Let me go ahead and get back somewhere in the middle of the harmonics of the sawtooth wave. Bring those three peaks together. Now we've become one very sharp bandpass filter. On my particular filter, I can turn this knob past where the three filters seem to be aligned, giving three bandpass peaks again, almost a notch effect. Or we can separate the three peaks again to emphasize lower and higher harmonics. I have a CV control for the depth of that effect. And what's very useful when you're using it in a format mode is to actually have those three filters track your keyboard. So you can keep sort of the same tone for each note. So I have a copy of my keyboard control voltage here. I'm going to go into the handy one volt per octave frequency input. Pick a note. Tune this particular filter to have a sound I want on sustained notes. Nicely emphasize lower harmonic there. And now that will track the keyboard. A more depth of envelope here. If I was to pull that one volt per octave tracking, that note sounds the same, but we're not settling back down to that nice fundamental. That's why I like having the keyboard voltage plugged in when I'm in format mode. This, as I mentioned, is a resonance or a Q control. I can go from almost no resonance, but still a little bit, to self-oscillation. And you hear those three individual peaks sweeping all together. And I can also put in self-oscillation. 
little bit of crackling there. It's very easy to overdrive this filter. I'm going to talk a lot about signal level management. That's one of the tricks to Taming Three Sisters, is controlling the level coming in, as well as the level going out. That's the normal format mode that I assumed was all this filter was about. But it also has this interesting crossover mode. When I throw this switch to crossover, now the lower filter chain is a low pass filter, the higher filter chain is a high pass filter, and the center chain is a bandpass filter with variable width. Actually, its cutoff is set by those low and high controls. So you can go from a normal bandpass filter to something much wider. That also is very, very useful. Now, when you're using it in crossover mode, the all output may not sound like you expect because it has all of the outputs going on at once. It's kind of a, an all pass filter with a little bit of phasing going on as you envelope through it. And I'll increase the resonance here so you can hear the peaks sweep through. But you see the very final harmonic content on my sustained note is kind of similar to what we would expect for a sawtooth wave, that nice flat drop off. However, if I go into just the low output, this becomes a four pole low pass filter. Not a bad sounding one either. Nice state variable sound to it. If I go to high, it becomes a high pass filter. Let's lower the cutoff. Maybe go to a little faster of a decay here. And then when I go to center, I have this very interesting variable bandwidth filter. If I turn my span all the way down, I have my narrowest center. You can see me sweeping through the harmonics there in the harmonic display. Maybe tune this to emphasize the fundamental. A little slower decay so you can hear it ring out. But as I open this up and start spreading out, I'll start allowing more harmonics through. Let's go ahead and pick a higher harmonic here as our center. And as I open span, you'll see that the area that harmonics get through gets wider. If I go all the way, pretty close to our sawtooth filter with a bit of resonance. That's much more useful than a typical bandpass filter, which is just a slope on either side of a cutoff frequency. This gives you a band of frequencies and has a richer sound compared to So that also makes this a very worthwhile filter. This is what it sounds like with a sawtooth. It also sounds very good with a square wave. I'll switch over to Moog square wave, pretty close to 50%. Standard low pass. Very classic tone. Go to format get these nice sweeping effects. Go back to my all output. A lot of motion there. It's almost as if I have multiple oscillators at different tunings. That's because each band is focusing on a different set of harmonics as it sweeps. Add a little bit of modulation to the pulse width. Pretty fat sound for one oscillator. And that's another beauty of this filter. As I mentioned earlier, this filter can go into self-oscillation. And you know a common trick is to take a filter on the edge of oscillation. Instead of feeding it an audio signal, you feed it a pulse, and it can ring out as a simple percussion instrument. Well, this has three filter channels, not just one. So let's pull our audio out here. And just to make life easy, I'm going to take the square wave out of our LFO here, run that into the audio inputs, all three of them at the same time, and let's just go ahead and sustain it so that the VCA is open. 
nice percussion sound. Depends on how close I am to full resonance. Tune it with the center frequency. But then the span allows me to create a tritone or a chord. Hear that slight ticking? That's us clipping on the output. This is where I might want an attenuator on this to go ahead and lower the level a little bit. We'll talk about that more in just a second. There's a little tritone there. And of course you can envelope that as well. So already you have a couple different filters. Triple bandpass, state variable, multimode, where it can be low pass, high pass, or a very nice bandpass with a variable width. And you can go ahead and ping it as a percussion instrument. But there's more. I've only been talking about half of what this quality or resonance control can do. Let's play around with the other half. I'm going to go to crossover mode because this is much easier to hear. And normally we have a nice resonant filter here. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to just the low pass output. So it sounds like a low pass filter. Raise the cutoff. There we go. Now, when I go counterclockwise from 12 o'clock, what this filter does is it adds in the inverse filtered effect. So in this case, where I'm in crossover mode and I'm using the low pass output, taking this knob counterclockwise adds in some of the high pass. The manual kind of refers to this as a um, wet dry control. It also can give you sort of an all pass phaser sort of effect. So I'm going to go ahead and sustain a note and start bringing in that high pass effect. You also see the harmonics change here in the spectra. So we're pretty close to passing all the harmonics we would expect in a sawtooth wave. Let's do that with the high pass output, high pass filter. So start turning this counterclockwise, we bring in the opposite filter output, in this case low pass. With a little bit of playing around we can come up with notch effects. And note that this is voltage controllable. You will have to watch your positive and negative voltages to get effects like this. And then let's go to this center output, which is normally a bandpass. We'll narrow it down a little bit here. And what the opposite effect does is it brings in the low pass and the high pass beyond that pass band and fades those up as well. Take all three outputs together. Start modulating the cutoff. A little bit of a phase shifter effect. A little bit of a rippling notch there. So that's another trick you can do with this very handy filter. Now, the problem with having three filter chains and a, really a total of six two-pole filters inside this 10 HP module is that when things get summed together and mixed around, it is very prone to clipping. Let's go ahead and stay with the square wave for now. I'm gonna go play around a little bit here with bringing just that audio into the all input and looking at this blue waveform on the output. Let's go ahead and sustain a note again. Nice tone, maybe even something lower. So you really distinguish high harmonics. I'll back off the resonance. Now you see I'm feeding it with not a very strong square wave. So only plus or minus a couple volts there. So I start to increase this level. Listen to a little bit of fuzz coming in on the high end. Hear that little bit of sound right there? And if you look at the spectrograph, you'll see some high harmonics appear. That's an issue with being overdriven internally. I find it really useful to have an attenuator on the input of this filter to decide if I want to overdrive it. And this is massive overdrive in this case. Or, there we go. 
got rid of those distorted high harmonics and have a purer tone out of it. Let's go over to the sawtooth. Same issue. Very nice tone there. As I start to increase the input, you see some high harmonics appear on our spectrograph. Right as I go into distortion there, or I can overdrive it. So I found with this module that I always want to have an attenuator on this input, or each of the inputs, if I'm feeding it to multiple things, and we'll get to that in the next movie. And sometimes it's useful to have an attenuator on the output as well, because this is so resonant it can create a very high spike and might overdrive modules downstream. That's a trade-off I'm willing to make, given how beautiful this filter sounds. Now, as I mentioned, this filter has multiple inputs and multiple outputs. This gives us some new possibilities in terms of doing spectral mixing or cross-fading in between sources, and on the output side, doing some fun stereo imaging. So I'm going to take a break here, redo the patch, and then in the next movie, we'll explore taking advantage of these multiple inputs and outputs.